Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you? Jan Scott with you till uh, 9 o'clock tonight on the Thursday, August 16th, our live show Thursday nights here in Boulder, the number one rated talk television show in Boulder in the world. Incidentally, we're also on uh, tomorrow at noon, and then we repeat 8 o'clock on Saturday nights. You can catch Jan Scott tonight, Sundays and Wednesdays at 9 uh, coming up next week is our Best of Boulder 2. And then uh, Route 66, the road trip uh, continues. A 30-part series now. A bunch of new shows coming out in the fall. And uh, what else? Oh, also, if it's not Thursday night, you can uh, call me at 4471-JAW. That is the jaw line named after... Uh, the jaw, when you call me, you're jawing at me. J-A-W, 4471-JAW. Or you can eat me, I mean e me, at uh, janscottlive at hotmail.com. All right. Joining us this evening, uh, our old friend John M. from KOA Radio News. John, how you doing? Nice to Good have to you. Good to be here. Back here Good on the television show. Last time I was here, I was here all by myself, and yeah. you were on Route 66. That's right, we were. And I was dying. No, you were not dying. One hour, yeah. one you, solid hour, and not one <laughs> phone call. No, you were too... You were, you were too eloquent for the people that watch the show. A lot of the people that watch my show are kids, they're young males, they're on drugs, and they're drinking. Hey, suck on this! Oh my God. I, I cannot believe it. Um, so they, you know. I, I don't think they caught that. Did you catch that? I never know. It's, a, it's John M., our old friend. John M. is here, our old friend John M. Yes. There is our old, old friend, friend John M. Is Right there he is. Oh my God! Look at this baseball jacket. What are you playing with for the Indians or what? Uh, what does this say? I don't think you have to kneel down a little bit lower. There you go. What is that? It's indecipherable. That's why the radio station I worked for got rid of that logo. Oh, oh that's a KGO. That's a radio station. Jacket. Eighty-one AM, San Francisco. So, uh, how are things down at KOA? Are they treating you? Rocking right? along, you know. The Clear Channel weasels are still counting the beans and crying. Crying about their $250 million loss in the uh, last quarter. You're going to actually smoke? Why not? You're going to smoke on, the, on my TV show? Okay. Takes a man to face lung cancer. <laughs> you're, you're smoking on top. There's no smoking in the building, you know that. So? I don't work here. <laughs> well, there is a performance clause, actually. Did That's you know that right. If you're doing That's a performance right. in the city of Boulder, you can uh, smoke on stage. So I got, I I got the hat on, on, I got the shades on, uh -huh. I got the cigarette. It's, it's the persona. But there's no smoking. Hey, huh? if, if Paulie Walnuts could get away with it on Larry King, uh, I could get away did, with it on your show. Is that right? Oh, God. Especially in front of Larry King. <laughs> Yeah. So what do we got going on? So you've tonight? been watching our show? You've been keeping been, up been trying to. You know, those weasels at AT&T Broadband, they don't, uh, they don't carry you. Now, you know, we have, we, have a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of new people working on the show. Uh, I understand. You have a, a whole new slew of, idi of uh, eager young people. Yeah, in interns, broadcast majors from CU, uh, communication people. Well, you um, couldn't have come to a better place, kids. And then this show. This, this is a man you can learn much from. Yeah. Because I know a lot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's our old friend John M., folks. Our old friend John M. is with us. 
It's our old friend. Ah, oh, there he is. Ah. All right. There we go. Back to Jan. Moving back to it's our old friend Jan. John. Jan. Jan. John. Jan. 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 John. There we go. Jan. There we go. Nice. Huh. Good. Hey, hey right. how are we doing? They're, they're learning. Stay they're with us. Back. There we go. John. It's our. Here we go. We'll try this one more time. It's our old friend John Ems with us this evening. <laughs> hey. And our good host, Jan Scott, is also here tonight. And plus our old friend, John M., is with us. And there Jan you go. Scott is and just... John a, M. With, from KOA News. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Enough of that foolish All right. Um, oh, my God. So what, what are we what, talking what, about? Uh, George Bush has been in the state. Oh. When, what happened to one of your reporters? Yeah, uh, Kim Cobell, uh, my okay. fellow uh, cohort in uh -huh. morning street crime. Yeah. Uh, Kimmy uh, was assigned to tag along with uh, little Georgie. And the Secret Service apparently gave her, uh, mm -hmm. gave her a little rough time. You know, she's a cute little blonde, about five foot mm -hmm. three. So, of course, these big macho Secret Service agents they're hitting on her, and when she didn't respond, they suddenly denied her what front do you mean they row were access. Oh, well, you know, flirting with her. That yeah. Kind of stuff. It's so they they did what now? So apparently they were flirting with her, and yeah. uh, when she was rather cold, mm -hmm. all of a sudden she got relegated to the back row. Uh, at the various events. She, are we going to talk to her tonight, or? Uh, no, no. I tried calling her, yeah. and she. Mm -hmm. I think she's out dating a Secret Service agent. Kim Cobell, no, a news, uh, a news person, a street field, reporter, street morning, reporter morning for KOA News, um, dissed by the Secret Service by uh, uh, George uh, George Bush's And people, she huh? was hot about it. Yes, really? she was. Which, did she did she talk about it on the air? No, no. <clears throat> too too professional, huh? Yeah, you know we don't we don't air our dirty linen uh, no. mm -hmm. there. I'll air the dirty linen here. Yeah. You can't do it down there. I can't do it down there. How many news reporters do you have at KOA? Dos. Two in the morning? Me and, me and okay. Cobell. Well, the, there's Amani Ali, mm -hmm. who's about, qualifies about half a reporter. He, uh, he goes out there in the afternoons occasionally and does stuff. Like of course, Jerry Bellard, his director. Is he a midget? Uh, <laughs> Uh, only mentally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's Jerry Bell, our news director, who is really an amazing guy. I mean, for a, mm -hmm. for a news director, he doesn't sit around and, and do the, uh, the corporate uh, bullshit you you know, the and the meetings and all that. He gets out there and covers yes. news. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, I saw him up here during the Ramsey case. Yeah. And then you've got, and at KOA, you have a news person who's working news, like you do the newscast from 9 and, and in the morning. You're on, let's talk about this, you're on Colorado in the morning. At noon. Huh? Right. I'm on at 10, 11, and noon, anchoring, 10, 11 and noon. anchoring the and, uh, news on KOA. Mm -hmm. And then you're on Colorado Morning News with Steve Kelly. Right. That's when I'm the street reporter. Yeah. And then I also anchor the 10, 11, and noon newscasts at uh, CKOL, uh, C KCOL in Fort Collins. Well, now, when you're on as a street reporter uh, in the Colorado Morning News, what do you do? Well, I go running around and cover, like, the tire, big tire fire, uh, warehouse fire the other day, yeah. and uh, you know, occasional homicides and the sort of sundry. So you're a real, you're one of the last few. I get the point I'm trying to make here is that you are one of the you and Kim Cobell and um, uh, are one of the last few real radio news reporters, radio news reporters left not only in the city of Denver, but in the state of Colorado. Boulder has none. Out on the street. That's right. You're not a rip and read reporter. I am, I am very proud of the fact that uh, everything that you hear me say on the radio is my own. You cover it. You, you get the story. You go out. You, you get the story. You write it. And then and phone it in. Phone it in. How many, uh, how many broadcasts? How many, four, uh, four or five a morning. So you do four or five a morning. Right. Really. But and then you know, Steve Kelly, my friend, who helped get me started in radio, he anchors the Colorado anchors Morning News with, with some woman. April's and then, uh, right. yeah, she used to work at. Um, I think she was over here at KBOL. Did I like did, April? Except no, she's a little too she, earnest. Did she, she get her takes speech herself a little too fixed? seriously? <laughs> well, let's just put it this way: she's not as bad as Baba Wawa. <laughs> Okay. So Miami uh, was Miami was great market. We actually had a honest to God, there was an anchor woman in Miami who was cross eyed. Yeah. It was the most disconcerting thing in the world to look at, to see Christy Krueger sitting there staring at the camera. Uh huh. And she was a TV person? Yeah. Well, oh, she was just slightly cross eyed. They love that. 
They love that. You know, and they hire little, people with deformities. Little fishnet these. stockings, push-up bra, and that goofy kind of cross-eyed look. No, that's Kathy uh, Saban over at Channel 9, the weather girl. <laughs> John M. is with us uh, this evening, ladies and gentlemen. He returns usually a monthly visit here to Jan Scott Live. Um, the uh, news guy, morning news guy, is on with uh, uh, Mike Rosen, uh, KOA News. He does the news with Rosen. Now, Rosen's an arch conservative, and you're not exactly that. How do you and Rosen get along? Oh, he never listens to the newscast, so okay. we get along fine. Uh, uh, my understanding is people call his show and complain about your newscast. Yeah, they don't, they don't realize that I'm, I'm not really a liberal. I'm not a liberal or I'm not a conservative. Yeah. I'm, I'm an anarchist. You I'm a libertarian. <laughs> you know, I believe in destroying all systems of government. Uh -huh. <laughs> I believe in bringing down the corporate <laughs> weasels as well. John M. smoking in the studio, and uh, <laughs> all right. So we, uh, you want to talk about some, some, some yeah. Stories? What do you want to talk some about? Of the, some of the stories. There's a gazillion things. First of all, in uh, Texas. This just came out today or yesterday. Texas delays execution of Beasley. Huntsville, Texas, four hours before he was scheduled to die, it was actually three, a state appeals court delayed the execution Wednesday of Napoleon Beasley, whose case has fractured the U.S. Supreme Court, fueled fresh criticism applying the death penalty to teenagers. The, uh, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals granted the delay to Beasley, who killed the father of a federal appeals court judge who, who was asking for it in a botched carjacking attempt. Um, applicant uh, is granted to, to stay of execution. Well, and he, he was 17 years old. I mean, I have to tell you, I'm a pro-death penalty kind of guy, but in this case, executing a 17-year-old kid who was on drugs you know, it just life imprisonment, okay. But I mean, and Boulder, what do you think? Four four zero three five seven two. John, I mean, they should not. They should not have been killing this. Kid. I disagree. He had a needle with his name on it, and they should have pumped it into his punk veins. No, John. Are, are you aware of what he did? I mean, he gunned this guy down in yeah. cold blood, stood over him, shot him again, no. stood in his blood, rifled his pocket for the car keys, shot the guy's wife. She was smart. She played dead. No. And uh, you know, and now, and he was like a high school val not valedictorian, but he was like an honor student. He was class but John president. John was mentally ill. He was on drugs, and he was a child. I don't think seventeen is a child. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got a fourteen year old, and uh, if he did something like that, I'd say put the needle to him. John, I'm a death penalty kind of guy. Don't get me wrong. You know, I mean, I think if uh, if you're eighteen, you go into a Seven Eleven, you shoot the clerk. We have it on camera. I think you should be executed. But seventeen, because well, there's another case where the kid was fourteen. You can't go. Uh, oh, I don't think we should execute fourteen year olds. The Nathaniel Brazil, and yeah. also in, uh, in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. No, they just put him away for life. Which I think is a waste of the taxpayers' dollars. You think they should have executed? No, them? no. I, I, I don't think you should execute 14-year-olds, but 17, I think, is a, uh, an age where you know you know what you're doing. Give us a call here, Boulder. You're up 440 uh, uh, 440-3572. Call us here uh, tonight. John M is with us. The first point, a first point of discussion is. Should Texas have executed a 17-year-old for, uh, for a murder, or should he have been left off? Should Florida execute a 14-year-old? Uh, 4403572, I say no. John says yes in half of the cases. You know, it's not like that other case in Texas where the guy was mentally retarded, and uh, they finally came to their senses and decided not to execute him. But, you know, Texas has a long uh, history of, uh, you that know, was hang them high. That was Hitlerian. You know, I mean, Hitler just executed all Oh, yeah. Of well, Should the one that got me was the one in Texas where the guy, he, was, he had an IQ of about 60, and he ate oh, his final geez. meal, and he saved the dessert. He told his uh, yeah. jailer, he said, I want to save the dessert because after the execution, I'll eat it then. Yeah. He had he no was, idea what was going on. He had no idea on. what was going on. So, Boulder, what do you think? 4403572 should... Um, the 17-year-old Beasley be executed for um, uh, shooting a uh, federal judge. Should any 17-year-old be executed? Yeah, or, or a 14-year-old. Should no, they be, I don't in the, be in the business 17, of yeah, children? maybe 16. I think it depends on the individual circumstances. Okay, we're not going to talk until you call me. And there's no screwing around. 
440-3572. I want somebody. Are you pro death penalty or against it? You have to call. Speaking of scumbags that deserve a lethal needle, how about Johnny Lee? You have to call. Wait, we're not going to talk. John and I are not going to talk. You I'm going to talk? talk. He might not talk. I'll talk. <laughs> You know, Johnny Lee, the scumbag that uh, took part in the gangbang of that mm -hmm. CU co-ed two years ago, he finally went on trial today down in uh, Pueblo. You know, they moved it down there because of the pre-trial publicity. Yeah, like he's going to get a better break down there. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I don't think there's a large Asian American. I don't think there's a large Hmong community down in Pueblo. No. And, uh, you know, these Hmong kids, I, I, I interviewed some of the, um, uh, some of the, um, uh, social workers that work with these Hmong gangsters, and they were afraid to come on my television show because they were afraid of reprisals by these Hmong. The kids. social workers were afraid. And they were Hmong social workers and a Hmong community leader from Westminster, and they said that one of the problems with the Hmong kids is that they were so screwed up. Their parents, it, it, it's followed generationally, their parents and parents were so screwed up from the Vietnam War that they are the most socially dysfunctional um, uh, immigrant group uh, that comes to America. And these kids are, uh, so the whole Hmong community is just- But they're, they're, they're tough little they're bastards. Afraid. Oh, they are mean um, uh, Kind of like the South killers. Koreans. I mean, I the cops tell me, they said, you get involved with the Mungs, you might as well walk around with, a, with a, uh, an assault weapon racked and round because if they decide they're going to kill you, they are, they are totally ruthless. Jesus. Oh, yeah, they are like, uh, Tom Colby. Mungs are nice people. I like Mungs. <laughs> I have nothing but good things to say about the Mung community. Tom Colby said in this show, and uh, was talking about the Vietnamese gangs and the Hmong gangs in Houston, Texas, and said that they were the, uh, they were by far the most vicious they gangs scare, that he, they scare that he everybody. had ever ever dealt with. <laughs> like in Miami, when the Colombians decided to take over the cocaine uh, trade from the uh, Cubans yeah. and from the ma mafia, you know, they just walked in there. They wouldn't just kill you; they'd kill you, your daughter, your wife, and the dog. <laughs> They scared the hell out of everybody down there. Pick up the phone. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Baby, it's late. You can call me. Call me on the uh, telephone. Da, 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 da. Right, uh, call me. Yeah, they don't want to talk about that. No, no, no. No, no, no. They're watching. They want to talk. Who's for executing? 14-year-olds and 17-year-olds. Who's Raise for executing... Raise your hand. Who's for executing the assholes that riot on University Hill? Now, there's there's a good... We, I would like to see... I, actually, I don't think it should be executed. Who's for execution? I right. think I think flogging would be okay. appropriate. Next topic. NAACP reports little progress in TV diversity. All right, now, <coughs> don't say a word. I'm not saying let me, anything. Let me, let me show you this story. Put the camera on me, John. Though. Right here. I won't say a word. John, I'm showing, I'm showing you this story. Are you with me? Yes, yeah. I, I'm okay. well aware here of that we story. NAACP, little progress in TV diversity. The NAACP renewed threats of boycotting uh, unless television networks hire more minority actors and executives to produce racially diverse programs. And then they go on to say, they talk about the percentage of whites and the, and the per low percentage of blacks. And what I say is I completely disagree with this. I mean, if they're so upset, they should bring back Amos and Andy. Because there was a black show and everybody liked it. Did you see that marvelous Spike Lee movie, Bamboozled? No, I haven't seen it yet. It was, oh, it was just hysterical. Spike Lee actually did a send-up of this, yeah. this entire subject, where there's this black, Harvard-educated TV yeah. executive, yeah. and he's frustrated because he can't get his black-oriented serious dramas, you know, on the air. So he comes up with this outrageous step-and-fetch-it type oh of, of a show right. with a, a couple of, of black street performers, and he names them Man Tan and Sleep and Eat. <laughs> and they do this outrageous, in blackface, yeah. this outrageous, uh, you know, stealing from chicken coops, and the, they have the dancers, you know, and picking any. And of course, it becomes a monster hit. You know, everybody in America is watching this show. 
I, say, I have a problem with the double a NAACP because the, you have a low percentage of blacks in America, you have a large percentage of whites, and the television networks are programming to the percentage of the people that watch. They're also programming to the percentage of the people that spend dollars. Whites have more money than blacks, uh, by far a larger amount. I mean, white males have a ton of money, so they're going to program to them, they're going to program to their kids, and it's just not profitable to program to blacks. Well, you know, you've got BET, you've yeah. got the Black Entertainment Television Network, and you've got a lot of black-oriented shows on, uh, well, you, not so much on WB anymore. There used to be a lot on the Warner Brothers uh, network, but they've gone for so the you, young, white so demographic. You, so you agree with me? I agree with you that, you know, the purpose of commercial television is to reach the lowest common denominator. <laughs> you agree with me? I You're agree with you. I can't help it. <laughs> All right. Here's the question is, uh, is there enough black programming on television. 4403572. Uh, no white callers. All right, forget about it. They're not going to call only black people tonight. Only people of color. Okay, Indians can call too. And uh, Hispanics. 4403572. The NAACP reports little progress in TV diversity. Um, they're complaining because there aren't enough black programming. I mean, to, in my mind, it, it, you know, there are other reports that come out that say in the history of broadcasting there are more. I mean, you look at all the b black characters that are played. They're not played, you know, specifically black roles. There's a lot of black programming. I'm like, what the Christ are they talking about? I don't get this part. You know, one of the major characters. The talk line. One of the major characters, probably the, the best commercial television show going, is The West Wing, and one of the major characters is is black. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know the president's a young aide, and there are about ten lead characters, nine or ten lead well, characters in that show, you know, and you have one black, which is about ten percent of the population. Has more black programming than anybody, followed by Fox. WB, we be black. <laughs> <laughs> but now they're going Buffy the Vampire uh -huh. Slayer and all the young, young programming. They're going for the young, affluent, white teenagers. Four four zero three five seven two. The talk line. Um, two things up. Death penalty for teenagers. Do you agree or disagree? Also, you can call us on the jawline four four seven one jaw, or you can e me at uh, Jan Scott Live at hotmail dot com. Why don't we combine John both Evans, subjects? John Evans about, in the house. The death penalty for black teenagers. Because this kid was black. This, uh, Is that right? Yeah, Beasley. Well, I mean, that's a whole other issue. I mean, we have yeah. a, an the incredible. That's amount why of I don't like the death penalty. Mm -hmm. You know, in a few cases, I'm I'm in favor of, but generally, it's the poor black guy that gets stuck. Yeah. The rich white guy, he always walks, mm -hmm. and that's that's why I'm in favor of outlawing the death penalty, except in a few cases, and this is one of them. Well, it, I'm, f I'm in favor of the death penalty when you have, if, if they're over 18, you need to be an adult. I think executing children is just absurd. Uh, if you walk into a 7-Eleven and you shoot somebody, we have it on tape, that's it. You deserve the death penalty, and you deserve it in 30 days. You don't deserve it in 10 years. I have what I'd like to propose to our state legislature, Jan's 30-30 law, which is you get 30 days for your trial after your arrest, and 30 days for your appeal, and on the 31st day, you're executed well, publicly. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know, because DNA evidence now, mm -hmm. uh, there are so many cases that have been overturned, and you have idiot, overzealous prosecutors and, and idiot defense, uh, public defenders, and the entire American justice system is, is fucked up. There's no justice in this country. If you got money, you can buy justice. You're smoking and you're cursing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm drinking Diet Coke. Let's all move sorts on. of chemicals. In Let's it. move on to the next story here. Here we go, Dawn. There's a ban on leaf blowers, okay? The Boulder Advisory uh, Board asked the city council to ban leaf blowers. The buzz, they roar, uh, they annoy, uh, maybe not for long if local environmentalists have their way, only the wind will legally blow leaves and grass clippings um, around in Boulder. So we have now banned leaf blowers. Let's execute everybody using an illegal leaf blower. How about this? How about this? 
to the city council on banning leaf blowers. Blow this! <laughs> That's what I have to say. <laughs> This is crazy! Well, this is crazy! Just a government in action banning no, leaf I agree. Blowers. I agree with banning what? leaf no. blowers. Come on, John. But they're loud, they're obnoxious. Oh, oh, what the hell's wrong with you people? You can't get out there with a damn rake like I used right. to do. Get out of here. Well, it's true. You should be out raking your lawn. Okay, University Hill. Oh, Up okay. On the now we get into the good All right. stuff. Front page of the Colorado Daily. Here it is today. Today's paper. University Hill Summit sets priorities. Business boosters. Get this. We have students rioting, burning, drinking, peeing on little old ladies' lawns, Passing raping, raping co-eds, knifing each other, beating each other up. Heads. And the answer, the, the, the University Hill, there's, there's three groups. University Hill, um, uh, there's a, ah, shit, I don't even know, there's the Hill, Hill Neighborhood, there's a Hill Association, they, you know what they've come up with? They went out and hired a marketing firm, John, and they want to revitalize the hill. Who it, hired the marketing firm? Oh, the city did. Our tax dollars? This is a joke. Those scumbags, joke, those weasels? Joke. This is a total joke. They took our tax dollars. The to University hire a Hill firm. Summit today is a. It was, I talked to Molly Winters, and, and I said, Molly, I said, you know, what are you guys doing? She said, well, now, I mean, I know what I'm doing. I have worked at this job. I know we are working very hard. I said, Molly, the problem's alcohol and violence. I know what I'm doing. And she's I said, you want, you want to come on the show? I have to think about it. So we have this snotty-nosed bitch who works for the city of Boulder. She's one of those bureaucrats that has risen to her level. Don, of it's a state. joke, Don. The University Hill Summit is a joke. There it is. Is that it? Does it say, keep that up the whole time, right there. It, this summit, and now they've got another meeting next week. They have another meeting next Thursday night to talk about this. And they've been meeting all over the place. The, the, the University Hill Association came up. They come up with, a, uh, with well, we'll have, to, we'll have to clean up the yards. We're going to have to paint things up. We're going to hire a marketing firm and spend $100,000, Boulder. A marketing firm? That's not going to stop kids from beating each other in with baseball bats, John. I, I got a better idea. You hire a few out-of-work mobsters. You arm them with baseball bats, you send them up there, and they start kicking ass and taking names, and I guarantee you within a week, there won't be any problems on University Hill anymore. Uh, Boulder, here's the problem. The, um, uh, uh, the, the University, Hill, um, University Hill Association, Neighborhood Association, plus the other three groups that are up there, they're, you got to hear this, they are missing the pole point in the boat. They re we went and, re and had a revitalization of the hill in 1997. Remember, we spent all that money, made everything pretty. The kids went and rioted and trashed the place. The problem is the booze. Booze we, and we, drugs. We have, you got it. We have an alcoholic university, John. We are number one Amen. in the country with drinking on that campus. Yep. The number one binge drinking university in the United States. Harvard's three studies show it. The Dartmouth University studies show it. The American University studies show it. Our chief of police came out and said alcohol is number one. Our district attorney said it's the number one problem. And what is the city of Boulder doing with their Hill represent, representative Molly Winters? saying, oh no, I disagree. We have Bob Moust up there, and he's going to have sober parties for the kids. And I'm like, get the hell out of here. We have a bunch of alcoholic students that we recruit that are coming to this university, and you're going to have a sober party? Who the hell, what kind of alcoholic in their right mind would want to go to a sober well, party? I never would have gone to uh, one. 4403572, Boulder, come on. Call, God damn it. What the f Get off the couch and call the phone! We'll give you a six pack of beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was an interesting study that yep. came out the other day from the uh, National Council on Alcoholism yep. that said the younger kids start drinking, the more likely they are to develop a problem with alcohol. If they start at 15 or younger, yeah. 40% of them are going to turn into uh, either alcoholics or Absolutely. problem drinkers. Absolutely. If they start at 17, only about 28% of them. And if they start at 21, it's almost zero. Yeah, if yeah you wait. a lot less. But, and that's a whole other problem. I mean, nobody wants to talk about the human body's inability to metabolize alcohol right. at under 21. That's but, right. you know, I mean, I've got to tell you, the city of Boulder, 
the city council and the city manager's office should take note. You know, your person on the Hill has missed the point. I talked to her, I said, you know, alcohol is really, well, that's your opinion. I said, look, you know, you don't have to give me this snot-nosed bureaucratic bullshit. I know what I'm talking about. I worked in this. Uh, I studied this situation yeah. on the Hill for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. You spending our tax dollars of $150,000 uh, to, to make the Hill look pretty isn't going to solve the problem. That's it's right. it's going to be more, more drinking, more freshmen pouring into the street, John, when they get here. Yep. Uh, this is the party school. It's okay. the highest school. Chris, how are you on the air with uh, John M. from KOA Radio News and Jan Scott? How's it going? Good. Go ahead, Chris. Keep talking. They'll they'll fix it. Okay. What's up? Well, just kind of curious. I haven't listened that much, but what would be your suggestion to halt the alcohol problems on the hill? Uh, my suggestion would be this: the um, the university and the city of Boulder have got to open a detox center uh, on the hill. They have to. Um, uh, they have to start talking about alcoholic drinking, teen alcoholic drinking, college alcoholic drinking. They need to hold in big letters, look at students, uh, according to Harvard University, you are the number one alcoholic college in the United States. You have a serious drinking problem. We need to do something about it. They need to start screening. I talked to the president of the university, Andoran Stump. They need to start screening out alcoholics. They need to send these kids questionnaires, find out what their drinking habits are, and if they look anything like an alcoholic or a drinker, they need to not admit them. That's what they need to do. We need to stop admitting and stop recruiting alcoholic students. That's what I would do. I don't know, maybe John I think me. I think Jan hit it on the head, and I think that'll start throwing some alcoholic uh, young asses in jail, too. Mm -hmm. that expand the drug. They'd have a special drunk tank up on University Hill, mm -hmm. and uh, they catch these kids drinking or drunk. Wham, you go in there all night and... Well, maybe all weekend. Maybe 48 you, hours would be a good uh, you, you see, Chris, one of the components of alcoholism, the illness alcoholism, is denial. And what we're right. suffering from it at the community level, it's called community denial at the level of university, at the level of city government, uh, at the level of the Hill Neighborhood Association, uh, with, with, and with the kids. I mean, you, these kids don't know any better. You know, they come from families that drink, they're coming to a town that drinks like crazy, and they're going to a university that's the number one drinking school in America. And are, do they even mention alcohol at this summit yesterday? They don't even bring it up. It's the number one issue and they don't even bring it up. So Chris, what do you, you tell me, what do, what, what do we sound like? I don't know, I can see. Are you there? I can see putting people I, in. I can't hear Chris, guys, you gotta help us out in there. Chris? Yep, still here. Did, Turn them up in here. Still here. Still here. Uh, how about the? Is he is he on the is he on there? Uh, please turn Chris up in here. We can't hear him. Yep. Can you hear me? Thank now? you. Go ahead. Yeah, talk. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I can I can hear you know uh, punishment for people who are going to violate the law and who are going to abuse alcohol to the extent that it's going to affect the community. Uh, as far as screening people, how would you implement that? Send a questionnaire. But Tell, isn't, that, isn't that kind of subjective? Yeah, well, Chris, I, so I who think... Would it, who would be the defining right. body of that... Process. I, I think what, what we do with our literature that we send out to, to prospective students is we, we put a, a notice that says important notice or urgent. CU is affected by a serious illness. It's a youth alcoholism. And in our attempt to screen out alcoholics uh, and continuing the disease, we would like you to answer this uh, following question. We are trying to do something about co correcting the problem and treating the alcoholic students that we have. How about that? That's a pretty good idea, and that, actually that sounds pretty good. Yeah. What would be the ramifications of somebody who was turned down who didn't feel that that was justified? Tough shit. Well, you're talking about a positive Well, if they're a very good student and it was a wrong decision, 
So you're we're not going to get away with that with affirmative action. You're not going to get well, away with I that know. with any other policies. I know, Chris. Listen, you're Discrimin answering. Oh, you're you answer got a good point, Chris. It's a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah, well, no, listen, you're, you're, you're absolutely alcohol. right. But at least you can <laughs> run it up the. See, they won't even run it up the flagpole. Yeah. They won't even say. They won't even send out in the literature. They won't even come out and talk publicly and say the University of Colorado has an alcoholism problem. You look at the Colorado Daily today, Chris. Do you read it? No, I don't. All right. Okay. Uh, a lot of, you get you read the Colorado Daily, mm -hmm. and here on page, I'll show you. Watch this. A lot of Every ads. single day in the Colorado Daily, I run a one by six ad, and okay, we have a we have a twelve thousand dollar ad campaign that I spent out of my own money to address these issues. Um, because the, the Robert Moss, who runs the Woods Johnson Foundation, a $3 million grant to address alcohol in the CU campus, won't get off his ass and do something. He just wastes the money. Right here, CU alcoholism is the problem. And they ran that right under the story about marketing groups sees big changes for <laughs> university. You see this right here? Can you see it? I don't know if, can we get a... Yeah. Uh, so I know what I'm talking about. I've worked in alcohol and drugs for 20 oh, years. Oh, I, I know you. I have. worked on. I worked at the county. I mean, but I'm not the only one. You've got Alex Hunter, Tom Kobe, sure, Mark sure, Beckner, sure. the the people out at the, at Mental Health. I mean, oh, everybody. I know, I know, but that's the the point I was trying to make, and I think you have an excellent point okay. in maybe advising prospective students uh, through a notice. What do you think about the idea of harsher penalties, like throwing them all in uh, the slammer for a couple of days? Well, I've already spoken about that. Yeah. That was the point I mentioned initially. Well, you know, Chris, the other thing, too, I think, this is what I, I mean, a few things I would do. If you are, well, I, you know, it's, there's, 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 um, there's a bunch of things. I mean, if you're involved in a riot, and you're involved in couch burnings, and you're involved, oh, and you're you involved in any of that, I think you should be expelled and your parents should be notified, and you're just out of here. Yeah, I uh, absolutely. And then if, Zero if you're having, a, you know, th there's a way that they need to talk to these kids, and they're not doing it. And, well, wait, and wait, back to your point, though. How do you determine who should be admitted and who shouldn't, judged on their maybe predisposition to let's, alcoholism? Let's say a kid writes back, and he answers... Nine out of ten questions. You know, I like to drink a lot. And he, he admits, I'm an alcoholic. I drink like a fish. Well, I'm sorry, we're not going to admit you. That, that, that's an interesting point. Yeah, and I agree with you. That would be a pretty good indicator. You know, I mean, this kind of goes along right with this story that came out today. Uh, I have it cut out in here. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's the one about um, the uh, students not getting loans if they're convicted of a felony. So now it's, it's if, if you can convicted of a, of a felony, a drug felony, after you get a student loan, you then lose your student loan and not admit it, not be admitted to college. And, and uh, so now we've got these idiots coming out and complaining, saying, that's a violation of civil rights. It's like, well, who the hell wants a drug addict, you know, going to their school? You're not going to learn anything anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm talking did, did you did you read that today in the paper? No, missed that one. Oh, that's a big story. Where is it? I have it right here in front of me. What was that you, again? No, how did okay. That work? The, well, the, the commies are complaining. I call them the commies. They're my friends. The PCers. Yeah. They're complaining that Congress passed a law that said you cannot get uh, a student loan if you had a felony drug conviction. So now they revised the law that says. You cannot get a student loan if you have a felony drug conviction while you're go after you get the loan while you're going to college. They're going to cut you off. And it makes perfect sense to me. And the PC people come out and say, oh, no, that's a violation of civil rights. It's like drug addicts have civil rights when they're out breaking the law and spending our money? No. And they're convicted of a felony? Of course not. Well, I, I think drug addicts have civil rights, but that one by, accepting, well, by accepting the loan, you agree to certain preconditions. You agree to certain conditions, and I guess if they want to take that money away, that's fine. You agreed to go to school and spend that money. You know, boy, see, the, the, the problem, back to this alcohol thing at CU, the, the problem is, is that the, it's the university's fault. It's the president's fault. The president of the university
No, she's out raising money. She doesn't have time to deal with this. She will not <laughs> deal with the number one health problem on campus. None of them will. Our city liaison to the Hill won't address the number one health problem on campus. You know what they want to do? Oh, oh, don't talk about that. That's don't, because it's don't, all don't, about don't, the money. Don't, you know, like Deep Throat told Woodward Bernstein, follow the money. All she cares, what do you think they, they chose her to be president of CU? She's a hell of a fundraiser. She brings in millions of dollars. Probably a drunk, She's the too. Bill Clinton of the academic world. Do you think she's an alcoholic? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, thanks for your call, man. Thank she's you. She's good All at right, bringing the box. Well, swell. <laughs> swell. You know, so, education you know, has become secondary around here. Th you know, God bless the University of the Colorado Daily. They put my little ad. I mean, that has to be a... <laughs> right under this, marketing group sees big change, and then they just sure they didn't go realize, on. I'm sure they blah, didn't realize blah, blah. the irony. Let's here. open up a nice restaurant. Let's have some nice restaurants. Let's erase the graffiti. What are we going to do about all the alcoholics and drug addicts that we have going to see you and on faculty? Do you remember the heroin addict? They had the professor they had up there. Oh, wasn't they, that amazing? She was Hispanic, so they really cut her a lot of slack there. They fire her for using heroin. She sues the university, so they settle with her and give her a job back. Her. So now we got her back in there shooting dope, teaching sociology. A dope shooting sociology professor. Oh. <coughs> John, you know... Uh, it's been fun. I gotta I, go. Would you leave me one of those? Or Certainly. Oh, thanks so much. Always yeah. happy to contribute to a friend's lung cancer. Leave, leave two of them, anyways. All right. Four four zero three five seven two. Uh, John M. from KOA Radio News. It's Good to real. see you. We'll see him next month with uh, another interesting evening. Uh, the, if you, smoking and cursing. Those of you kids who go to broadcasting school, you want to, uh, if you ever want to intern, you want to intern Don't with a guy. <laughs> Don't do it. I don't need the competition. <laughs> you can go out the back door. There's a stage door right there, John. You can just exit. He's exiting stage right. Excellent office. All right, bye. <laughs> oh, my God. What, you can't? I forgot your ashtray. Yeah, take that with you. Yeah. All right. Open lines, 4403572. Jan's got live the name of the program. You can call Jan now. Let's talk. All right. Um, <coughs> incidentally, we were on TV the other day. No, we were on. Uh, we were in the news uh, right here on the front page of the Colorado Daily, uh, and you probably saw this story. Scott vows to televise commissioners. There it is. Um, and. We uh, did. We went down there and videoed the county commissioners and ran it on this cha channel today at 3.30 it was on. Two stories, the Colorado Daily, the only newspaper to cover a historical event. The first time in 200 years, the uh, televising of our county commissioners meetings. And they're out there saying, oh, it's going to cost $100,000. It's going to cost $6,000 per broadcast, according to this uh, newspaper story. We went down and did it for virtually nothing. So my question to you, Boulder, is should the county commissioners uh, meetings be televised? 4403572. Should the county commissioners meetings be televised is the, um, uh, is the question. Uh, and did you read this story? What did you think? Uh, we went down there. Allie Finnessy and I went down. Allie's uh, works on the TV show. She ran camera for half the time. I ran it for the other. We videoed it, brought it back, put an open on it and a close, and um, took it right. Kate brought it right down to this TV station. And Andy Berge, our executive director, banged it right on the. I said, "Can we put the county commissioners meeting on the air today?" And he said, "How about three o'clock?" Oh my God, that was complicated. Took a little old SVHS camera, a high quality cable stand, looks just as good as this, and put and videoed the county commissioners all three hours, which they actually had an hour and a half of airtime, and put them on TV. Uh, what do you think? Should we continue to televise the county commissioners' meetings? Do you want to see uh, county politics in action? 440357. Hey, Chandan. Where's Chandan?
Come on in and get two more little camera shots here, Chandan. You can adjust this camera and then just pick a shot. You don't, now, you don't even need your headphones, okay? We'll live this right up to your creativity. These will be your shots of your choosing. This will be your, don't even, don't listen to old, don't, don't let that, that person back there. You just pick the shot and, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll go with it, okay. As long as all three of them are different. And you get my good side. Were you about to call me a bitch? Uh, wh what did you say? Were you about to call me a bitch? No. I like you. Okay. You know what I like about you? What's that? Is your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dawn, our new director. Meow. <laughs> she is so hot. Oh, my God. You, you should come down and be a part of the studio audience. I am telling you. The intern chicks we have, it's like... It's like the uh, Playboy channel around here these days. Yeah, it is. Got a letter from Gabe Lee in the Marine Corps. And next week, we'll bring down his address. Any of you who, any of yous who want to uh, write to him can. He's in his third week in boot camp. He writes and he says, I love it. One of the uh, only kids from Boulder in a long time to be in the, that one's fine, don't you? Join the Marines. The United States Marine Corps is going to go out and fight for freedom. Mm, 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 We don't like, he doesn't like those side shots. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. Uh, <laughs> I told him, get any shot you want. And then I'm like, mm, 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 mm. you ever watch Sesame Street? What are those two animals they have on? Have you seen it done where the, where the two animals go? Yep, 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 yep. No, 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 no. Yeah? I have seen it, but I don't know. What are, they, who they are. Are, what are they called? Let's try your shots. Let's see what we got. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no? Camera one. Where? This one? Yes. Okay. Cool. What's this one look like? There's camera three. Oh, yeah, that's kind of nice. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> nice. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, I like this. Uh, how do I look? I'm ready for my close-up now, Mr. DeMille. All right. Um, okay, World Bank. Oh, man, I can't believe these people. The World Bank, not good for children, according to Carol Beninsky, Rocky Mountain Peace and Justice Center. And then here's another letter from Gary Ball in the Colorado Daily. And then Craig Avery writes a story today, Boulder to consider opposing international trade agreement. I want somebody to tell me why the World Bank isn't good for us. I mean, please, somebody, somebody tell me. The World Bank provides, you know, what is the World Bank? The World Bank is essentially um, an American bank and a German bank. And then other countries throw in, and we take money and we loan it to underprivileged countries. We give it to industry so that they can provide jobs, so that people can work their way out of poverty. We give it to government so that they can build infrastructure that is roads, electricity, water, sewers. All right, we loan them this money. America used to give away money by itself. Remember the Soviets? Nobody ever paid us back from World War II, all those countries destroyed by the Germans. We gave money to everybody under the Marshall Plan. We never got any of it back. So between ourselves and the Germans and some other European countries and the Japanese, we formed the World Bank and we said, hey, you think you could pay us the money back or at least the interest on the money? And we set out some conditions. And no one, but no one can actually come out and give me specific examples. Uh, I mean, they're making, they're making the World Bank out to be the villain, like America out to be the villain, or companies, or work, you know, out to be the villain. And that's just simply not the case. You know, America is the greatest nation on earth. We, we help a lot of countries. If you know anybody who actually works in foreign service, um, and, and talk to them about what they do, or people who live and work overseas and help developing nations, what they always have to say is far different than little commies like Carolyn Beninsky, who's never done a damn thing in her, in her life except want to be a socialist, a communist, and an anarchist, you know, and she would like 
to prove her point and collapse civilization. You know, these people want, we want Africa the way it was 300 years ago, when everyone starved equally. I mean, I don't get it about these people. And now they want the Boulder City government not to buy World Bank bonds, but there's no evidence of it. The only thing the city attorney's office in Boulder came up with was is that there's one part of the free trade agreement that they'd like to see changed, and that is that they don't want a multinational com company coming to Boulder and vacating all of our home rule laws. Okay, that makes sense. There's one thing. Let's fix that. We certainly don't want a multinational to come here uh, as part of, the, part of the free trade agreement um, and, and violate all of our, say, open space or environmental laws that we work so hard. I mean, that's common sense. Okay. But it took the city attorney's office to come up with that. These folks at the Rocky Mountain Peace and Justice Center, which is just um, another word for the communist anarchist center, they can't come up with anything. And then uh, this, this woman, uh, she is unbefucking believable, says at the end of the year of working on the World Bank bonds boycott, <laughs> World Bank, I love it, I am haunted with one image, the image of seven million dead children. Yeah, like the World Bank killed seven million dead children. Okay, now where did they die? The United Nations Development Program, 1997 Human Development reports that seven million children die in 20 countries in Africa every year because of the World Bank. That is such bullshit. Millions of children die in Africa every year because of starvation, because of ignorance, because of lack of education, because of lack of water, because of lack of food. And what does the World Bank bring to an already starving African continent? Food, money, water, jobs, people, teaching, learning. I mean, this is, this is a bunch of, you know, communist horseshit, um, anarchist propaganda. Don't you buy this for a minute. You better do the research before you go. I mean, that's the problem with a lot of people in Boulder and certainly a lot of students. They'll take some idiot like this and buy everything she says without researching it. Now, notice she makes all these, you know, huge sweeping statements without one bit of evidence. Uh, dividing 7 million people by 360, that comes out to 19,000 children a year in Africa alone. Okay, children have been dying in Africa every day uh, for thousands, hundreds of years, but now, in the, in the year 2001, it's the World's Bank fault. It's our fault because you had lunch today. You killed all those children in Africa. Eat your dinner. Think of all those starving children in Africa. You murdered them. You murderers. That's what Miss Beninsky is saying. It's a commie name, too. She's probably from Chicago. All right. Uh, at first, mind and heart cannot grasp the reality of these deaths. It's just a number. Ah, oh, Christ. You might call me emotional. Oh, yeah, you are an emotional propagandist. You might say I'm morbid. You are. But I feel compelled to image the faces of these children because you America... Was, I just, I, don't you love these people? You know, in the 60s, when the hippie movement was formed, we wanted free trade. We wanted uh, a world bank. We wanted... Uh, the dub World Trade Organization. And now, now that we've got it, and there's nothing else to fight about, the commies have now said, no, 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 we don't want it. Uh, uh, the Boulder City Council, if they vote, I mean, it doesn't matter, or, you know, what, but I mean, if they do vote on this, they're going to be stupid. I mean, they may succumb to the pressure of the leftists and the communists and the socialists writing to city council. <laughs> starving children in Africa, the bonds, the bonds, the World Bank bonds, the WTO's killing. No, it's not. It is not. What's killing people in all of those countries are the warlords, are the corrupt governments, uh, are the problems that they've been having for centuries. Our American Foreign Service, our Peace Corps, our volunteers from various organizations are going to these countries with more money 
than ever from the World Bank to try to put in infrastructures to try to I mean look at all the, how the people beat up how the people beat up Nike you know they beat the crap out of Nike right and uh, uh, Nike